everyone, will everyone please stand? Mr. Latant, please give us order. The assembly will now be in order. Please be seated. institutional foundations, the climactic trembling of a wounded earth, that child grew into adulthood. As expanding technologies heightened the social while diminishing the communal, as the globe became a village and the country became more bounded, this child thrived into adulthood and came here today ready to embark on a new journey, ready to change that world. Even amidst, yes, that child is you. <laughs> Even amidst our different histories and identities and personalities and beliefs, this is our common story. And today, we share a new name in that story, Hampshire alum. You are Hampshire College alums. Be proud. Let us take a moment then to recognize those who have lent a hand on this path. Please stand with me and recognize your family and friends who have nurtured and anguish and brought you here that first day. Family and friends. mentors and teachers who urged you and tormented you and frustrated you and inspired you. The student mentors of all kinds, each other. The Tibetan monks whose time of study here ends with us today also. <laughs> the people who care for the grounds, the buildings, the computers, the farmers who grew our food. The earth beneath our feet the beautiful sunny sky above us, the energy between and within us, 
my friends, alums, we send you with our minds and hearts, our hopes and fears, our blood and sweat. Do not strive for easy lives. Strive to be stronger human beings. Do not strive for tasks equal to your power, but rather for power equal to your tasks. So the doing of your work will be no miracle. You will be the miracle. The path is ahead. The story is yours. Everybody and welcome, and welcome to the sun. My name is Gay Hill, and I'm the chair of the board of trustees of this great institution, Hampshire College. <laughs> One of the board's happiest responsibilities each year is voting on the faculty recommendation for the granting of degrees. I'm pleased to say that yesterday we were presented with the list of all your names and unanimously approved the motion to grant your degrees. <laughs> so it's a done deal. You'll be getting your diplomas, attesting to your accomplishment, and completing your Bachelor of Arts degrees at Hampshire College. But let's not a jump ahead to that yet. We need the ceremony to impress upon all of us what an important day this is. We need the processions and the speeches and the music. So stay in this moment, cherish the achievement, and the celebration the ceremony signifies. I'm the parent of a student who graduated in 2006, so I've sat where all you friends and family are today. And actually, my son is sitting out there somewhere, too. His experience at Hampshire is what led me to appreciate how the design of this college's particular delivery of a liberal arts education prepares students for our complex world. To you families who are here today, to see your graduate walk across this stage, thank you for supporting your students and pursuing their degrees at Hampshire. At times, I'm sure the Hampshire approach has seemed both confusing and challenging, but I hope you feel it has been worth your emotional and financial support. <laughs> Let's be honest, right? <laughs> I hope Hampshire has been a place your student found an academic home and succeeded in growing in more ways than you could have imagined when you first sent them off. At a time when constant change, disruption, and innovation make the work world an evolving one, how to make connections, how to ask questions, and how to think comprehensively, critically, and creatively become more important. Students at Hampshire are challenged to do just that. It will serve them well as they go off to productive lives, adapting themselves as change carries them along in their careers. To you students, I hope you feel the benefits of having been here at Hampshire, where you were pushed to form your own conclusions based on facts that you gathered, to seek answers to questions you originated, to analyze conventional wisdom in order to determine if it applies to you. You are graduating with our trust that you will continue to contribute to knowledge, justice, and positive change in the world. As you leave Hampshire behind you, you will define what personal success means to you. That will be different for everyone in this graduating class. But I hope you will continue to challenge boundaries in building your lives to affect change in the world and to continue to learn and to teach and to value independent thought. My experience with Hampshire alums tells me you take a little bit of Hampshire with you. You'll find yourself encouraging cooperative action and explaining how collaboration leads to better innovation. You'll speak out against racism, gender stereotyping, and discrimination of any kind. You'll volunteer to help your communities, and the, both at the local level and at large. You'll work to bring sustainability into your everyday lives. You'll utilize skill and determination to turn ideas into action. 
you'll bring a Hampshire way of thinking to all you attempt. And in the process, you will continue to learn and to grow and to be the independent thinkers, creators, and doers we celebrate today. It takes a particular kind of person to succeed at Hampshire. Intelligence is key, but so is motivation and self-awareness. And it helps if you appreciate what Dr. Seuss meant when he asked, why fit in when you were born to stand out? <laughs> I encourage you to never be afraid to stand out or to stand up for what you know is right. I hope in this moment you appreciate all you did to get here and the support you received from your families, your friends, and the amazing faculty, staff, and administration at Hampshire College. Celebrate this moment. Thank you. And now, our president, Jonathan Lash. So, you know I love you guys. You absolutely amaze me. That's probably enough, right? I don't need to say, say anything. Okay, trustees, speakers, faculty, staff, families, friends, graduates, welcome to Hampshire's 44th commencement. Amazing. A soggy night and a brilliant day, we couldn't do better. What a day for celebration of the latest generation of ringers of the bell. I, I want to start by specially recognizing uh, some of our colleagues who have helped to shape Hampshire and all of our lives and who are retiring. Uh, I want to start with Maddie Marquez. Does, does she define what tough love is about? Is she an inspiration? Is she somebody who truly believes in the students she works with? <laughs> Maddie, I, I, I don't see you out there. Um, <laughs> we, we are so proud and so grateful for what you have done. I want also to uh, recognize Linda McDaniel, the longtime secretary in Haku. <laughs> there are so many generations of faculty and students whose lives have worked better because Linda was able to answer their questions, help them with their stupid problems, and enable them to move forward. <laughs> She, she never said that. But <laughs> um, and there are... That wasn't in the script. There, there are four beloved faculty who are retiring. Um, Charlene Devanzo, Professor of Ecology. Lori Nissanoff, Professor of Economics. Ken Hoffman, Professor of Mathematics. And David Kelly, Associate Professor of Mathematics. <laughs> They're retiring after more than a century, collectively, <laughs> of sharing their love of learning, their passion for understanding with their students. We'll miss them on behalf of the entire Hampshire community and generations of students, I thank them and wish them well. And of course to you guys. Um, so we've spent three years together. I can't thank you enough. You're making the transition from Div 3 to Div Free. You have each of you done the absolutely remarkable thing of creating your own customized, unique education because you're unique people. I just, the Dr. Seuss really got it right. It's been so much fun to work with you. 
it's a little trite to say it, you're ready to move on, we're not ready to lose you, please, please stay in our lives. It's going to be a kick to see what you do in the world. And I want to add my thanks to the families that made it possible for these remarkable young people to spend time with us. I never get over how important it is that you're willing to trust us with your children, um, your brothers, your sisters, your nieces, nephews, grandchildren for a period of time. I hope you're as proud of them as we are. Thank you for all you've done, for all the sacrifices, the support, and the love. And then there's the whole Hampshire family, the inspiring faculty, the amazing and dedicated staff. Look at the way they got this place together. You remember this field was a mud hole a week ago. <laughs> Students who make the shared process of shared learning so endlessly exciting and unpredictable and rewarding. To reiterate something um, that is, characterizes this whole experiment, Hampshire was created on the premise that if a school could shift the focus from teaching to learning, the results might be extraordinary. Well, here you are, you are the proof. <laughs> I've, I've told you before, like so many people in Hampshire, I'm here because of the students, and you make me realize that that choice was exactly right. In this inquiry-driven curriculum, you have imagined questions, wrestled with the maddening way that the search for answers only deepens the question. You've recruited faculty to advise and challenge you, ignored conventional approaches, invented ways to turn ideas into action, as Gay said, and that skill, it turns out, will stay with you and empower you. We can see that in what Hampshire alums are doing every day. Some months ago, we interviewed many of you to try to better understand what makes a student who thrives at Hampshire. Your answers were remarkable and remarkably consistent. You're independent-minded. Well, that's not news. <laughs> you are driven more by questions than answers, more by what you want to know than what you're told to learn. Did I mention that you're independent-minded? <laughs> you are creative. You are innovative and often irreverent. You're motivated by ideas and curiosity, not by grades or competition. I did say independent-minded. <laughs> one other quality, though, one other quality, perhaps the most interesting and certainly the most important. You have, to a remarkable extent, the capacity for empathy, that precious combination of soul and heart that allows you to put yourself in another's shoes, to feel what they feel. We heard that from you again and again. Empathy animates your incredible passion for justice. Yeah, Hampshire students can be ornery, angry, ideological, dramatic, and occasionally demagogic. <laughs> but, but you get back to it. You get back to that sense of justice. And that's really important and wonderful about you. Empathy is the glue that binds community, the quality that makes the transition from global destruction to sustainability even imaginable. Empathy creates the possibility of learning that is emotional as well as intellectual and therefore transformative. Hampshire's approach, treating classes as a shared enterprise in learning, enhances your own tendency toward empathy because Hampshire faculty work so hard to draw out, explore, and respect your ideas. Having our feelings and our ideas respected, we develop the capacity for authenticity to be and to express our genuine selves and to respond to the authentic feelings and needs of others. Empathy enables leadership because the essence of leadership is not the exercise of authority, but the building of shared understanding. Leadership isn't imposed like learning, it is mostly dialogue. And empathy is a powerful means, perhaps in the end the only means, to overcome the effects of the unconscious biases we absorb from our culture and to which we respond without awareness, but no less destructively for all that, what Shankar Vedantam calls the hidden brain. As our society moves towards dismantling officially sanctioned racism, sexism, and homophobia, we are left still 
with a culture that inculcates prejudice, false expectations, and fear. Vedantam describes research tracking the attitudes of children from preschool to junior high. They begin free of race-based biases or preconceptions, but by the time they are nine or 10, they have developed unconscious bias. Children of color as well as white children, regardless of how hard their families try to teach fairness and acceptance. How does this happen? Where does it come from? Well, we absorb it from television, from advertising, from lyrics, from the vast flow of digital pop culture, and our culture teaches it. We learn it from our elders who themselves soaked it up unconsciously as children. It is a cycle we have to break. Perhaps our speaker today and the pioneering show she stars in will begin to help to change that. So, Ms. Cox, you know that they chose you. This, this, this is not a top-down. You made a really good choice. But empathy, empathy is an antidote. It is hard to profile someone if we put ourselves in their place and are able to feel what they feel. I admire you, my friends, especially for your capacity for empathy and your passion for justice. I know that you can learn anything, you will invent what you need, you will build what you can imagine, you will change the world. You've rung our bell, now ring the bells of society. Again, knowing you, I don't have to tell you that, you are what gives me hope. Thank you, good luck.